Good morning, good afternoon on this Sunday. This week's Torah portion, we begin the portion of Shlach, the story of the spies that Moses sent to check out the land of Israel and to figure out the best way to conquer it. As God had told them, they had left Egypt a year earlier, and God told them, it's time to go to the promised land, the land that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I will give to the children of Israel. And Moses sent spies and the Jewish people go to Israel. And God made many miracles happen for them. But yet, 10 out of the 12 spies, everything that God did for them in the land of Israel, they saw in a negative instead of a positive. For example, the rabbis tell us that God made it that all the people were burying their dead so they shouldn't notice the Jewish spies. Yet, the Jewish spies looked at it and said, oh look, this is a land that consumes its inhabitants. Everyone is dying. The fruit were luscious and big and beautiful. Yet the Jewish people saw it in a way that they said, oh my gosh, everything here is abnormal. And they decided they don't want to go to the land. And Yeshua and Caleb, Joshua and Caleb, who married Miriam, Moses' sister, said, Vayas Kolev, Kolev quieted everyone and said, listen, this is the land that God gave us. We will be able to conquer it. Don't be scared of the giants. Don't be scared of the, of the fruits. If God tells us, this is the land, this is the land. And he says, remember that this is a land that flows milk and honey. And of course, God punishes the Jewish people. And what happens is the next 40 years, they wander in the desert. And all the spies and that whole generation who cried and said they were fearful to go, didn't go into the land. And only 40 years later, does Joshua bring the Jewish people into the land of Israel and they conquer Jerusalem and the love story of the Jewish people of the Holy Land of Israel begins and continues till this very day. A love story that has endured so much yet through 2,000 years of exile wherever we've been we've prayed towards Jerusalem prayed to be returned L'shana Abba Yerushalayim and continue to celebrate the story of Israel the story of the Jewish people. So many of you know that Levi has spent the last year in Sfat studying. And he comes home on Wednesday after a full year of studying and of mentoring in such an inspiring and, and Kabbalistic and sacred city. One of the four holy cities in the land of Israel. You have Yerushalayim, Tiberias, Hebron, and Sfat. So this past Friday, Levi went to the cemetery in Sfat, which is a very special cemetery. Because on one side, you have some of the greatest Kabbalists buried there, the Ari, the Holy Arizal. Rabbi Shlomo el who was the founder, who was the author of the Lachad Dodi, Pinchas Ben Yer, some of the greatest sages from the time of the Talmud. Chana and her seven sons, the famous story of Chana and her seven sons who sacrificed for the oneness, the monotheism of God, and so many others. The Rebbe's brother, the Rebbe blessed memory, his brother Yisrael Ayelev, who our son is named after, is also there. But on top, it's an IDF cemetery for soldiers. And Levi went there on Friday to pray the, the Friday before he leaves. And he went on top first to this IDF cemetery. And he saw there the fresh grave of Ori, one of the three soldiers who was gunned down on the border of Egypt this past week. A beautiful soul, three young beautiful people who were killed just for the fact that they were protecting the Holy Land of Israel. And Levi went and he noticed that there was a woman who was sitting there in her uniform, maybe 26, 27, 28 at max. She was crying there. And Levi prayed and he went down to pray at the Arizal, at the Rebbe's brother, at the Shlomo el -Kabatz. And then he came back up and she was still there. And he went over to speak to her and he asked her who she was. And she said to him that she was the commander of Ori, of this beautiful soldier who was gunned down in the height of his life. And she said how she got to know him over the last six months. And what a remarkable human being he was. She said he was always positive. And she said just like his name Ori, he was full of light and hope for the future of Israel. He loved the land and he loved the people. And I think about the story of the, 12, of the 10 tribes who said we can't go into this land. I think about soldiers like Ori and his commander who every day sacrificed to protect this land and have so much faith in a land, through all its obstacles, through all its challenges, they love the land. Eretz Zavat Chalav Advash, a land that flows milk and honey. Yes, the spies made a mistake.
But we have so many brave young people who love our land every day. This past week, Moshe Krauss passed away at 101 years old. The story of Moshe Krauss, who was born in 1922 and ended up in a concentration camp. And he was in a concentration camp. He was a cantor, he had a beautiful voice. And he began singing in the barracks to cheer up the inmates. And the Nazis heard him sing. And they said, we want you to sing for us. And they would pull him to sing for them. That's how he survived. And every day he would take his rations and he would try to give them to some of the other inmates. After the war, he immigrated to Israel and he wanted to fight for his country. And one day, the chief of the IDF heard his beautiful voice and says, you know, we have a rabbi in the IDF. We have a chief of the IDF and generals, but we don't have a cantor for the IDF. You could become the cantor of the IDF and you'll sing for the soldiers in time of joy and sometimes, unfortunately, in times of pain, in times of struggle. And Moshe Krauss became the first chazan of the IDF, where he sung for many years. From there he traveled to South Africa, and then he eventually resided in Montreal, in Canada, where he passed away at 101 years old. But he asked to be interred in the land of Israel. He wanted to be buried in the Holy Land of Israel, which he loved so much. The story of the Jewish people, our love story with the Holy Land of Israel that God gave us, the heroes from the past and the young heroes like Ori who are so young who gave their life for the land they loved. This is the land that God gave us. It's our eternal gift, our eternal right. And we have to remember the words that Kalev said, Eretz Zavat Chalav Advash. It's a land that flows milk and honey to the Jewish people. We should cherish it. We should embrace it. We should be proud of it. And we should see the light and the love that emanates from it. God bless you and have a good day.